Hello. Happy January 4th. Awesome. Four days into the year. Happy birthday, if it happens to be your birthday. And welcome in. My name is Allie. Welcome to Allie Cat Arcana. We're going to we're going to read a bit about the personology guide for January 4. It is The Secret Languages of Birthdays and this book is by Gary Goldschneider and Juiced Elfers. So January 4 people, what do we got? It is the day of formulators. Month January, day 4, sign is Capricorn and it's 13 to 15 degrees. It's a Capricorn 2. You're a cardinal sign and you're an earth sign. All right. The day of the formulators. I'm checking out like a new setup here so I can keep this microphone close to me. Um, now I just got to find a way to hold this book and read it while this is here. I think I figured it out. All right. Those born on January 4 have a natural talent for solving all sorts of problems. Most often this gift is of a technical nature. Those born on this day specialize in examining a situation and summing up what is wrong with it in a terse, concise style. By being able to formulate what others find it difficult to conceptualize, they put themselves in great demand. January 4 people often have a practical knack for accomplishing tasks with a minimum of effort, but they also have imaginative ideas which can be far-reaching as well. Their imagination is rarely of a highly fanciful variety, however, and generally, has a solid basis in everyday reality. January 4 people may thus be of the fortunate view or fortunate few who dream up schemes that actually work. More highly evolved January 4 people follow through on their ideas, developing a sequential process from observation to formulation to implementation. And once this approach is mastered by them, it can be applied over and over again in the future. Michelle, happy happy January 4th. Great to see you, my friend. Mwah, so good to see you. January 4 people are natural collectors of all sorts of things. Not only physical objects, but facts and detailed information as well. They like to surround themselves with books, tools, materials, and other useful paraphernalia so that they can have it within hand's reach when needed. Those born on this day are very direct and do not specialize in idle speculation. Conversation is something they enjoy in a social sense, but it must have some meaning or purpose if it is to hold their interest for very long. Generally, January 4 people are highly organized. They can drive others crazies, crazy with their insistence on order, whether it be a demand for mental clarity or orderly arrangement of their physical surroundings. It seems that to understand almost anything, including human emotions, they must apprehend them within a certain formal framework. Due to such an orientation, they may be at odds with those who prefer to take their cue from emotions or intuition. This is particularly true in regard to love relationships. Similarly, through January, though January 4 people can make excellent parents and providers, they also can arouse resentment from their children because of their dominance and control. They must remember that there is no single correct way to live and that if they let it up a bit, if they let up a bit on their children and mates, they will allow everyone concerned to be freer and more themselves. Because of their own highly characteristic mode of operating, January 4 people are usually recognized as individuals who have their own distinct style, not only in their thought, but also in their dress and manner. They are very much their own person. For this reason, it may be difficult for them to take orders for very long. And although they can be very good at working with a team or as a valued member of an organization, most born on this day ultimately will want to form their own business or company. As artists, craftspeople, or self-employed workers, they are motivated enough to be highly productive. Bam. So, <clears throat> alrighty, um, grabbing a sip and then we'll learn about the numbers and planets. Okie doke, numbers and planets. Those born on the fourth day of the month are ruled by the number four and by the planet Uranus. 
Those ruled by the number four tend to be difficult and argumentative, and such traits are often magnified in the January four personality. Generally, generally, number four people do not emphasize money matters, and indeed, those born on January 4 are more concerned with ambition and power than with money, per se. Those influenced by the planet Uranus can be quick and explosive in their change of mood, qualities fortunately grounded uh, qualities fortunately grounded for January 4 people by the heavy influence of Saturn, ruler of their sign, Capricorn. In tarot, the fourth card of the major arcana is the emperor, who rules over worldly things through wisdom, the primary source of his power. The emperor is stable and wise. The force of his authority cannot be questioned. The positive associations of this card are strong willpower and steadfast energy. Negative indications include stubbornness, tyranny, even brutality. Health. Those born on January 4 must learn to be more patient with others. They can get very upset over breaches of order, and constant irritations can undermine their nervous system as well as cardiovascular health. By being both more accepting and neutral, they can save themselves lots of problems. It is important that January 4 people set up a regular exercise pattern, particularly if they have a sedentary profession. As far as diet is concerned, it is recommended that they adopt a fairly relaxed attitude and simply enjoy a highly, a highly, ver a highly varied diet with plenty of flair and exotic accents. Collecting all sorts of recipes may be right up their alley. Vibrant and active romantic and or sexual activities are also recommended. Therefore, those born on this day must try to allow impulse, instinct, and improvisation to play their part and enjoy such qualities in their partner. Advice. Not everything in life can be designed or not everything in life can be designated or formulated. Respect others, even if they are on the wrong track. Be open to new ways of doing things. Improve your own methods. Don't be afraid to improvise when necessary. In a word, loosen up. <laughs> so meditation for January 4 is the world of the unknown must always be respected. I love, man, I, I love all the meditations so far. They're, they're amazing. <clears throat> so Capricorn, the goat. So your strengths are that you could be conceptual, structured, and pragmatic. Your weaknesses can be that you're dogmatic, closed, or intolerant. And those, okay, those born on this day, Sir Isaac Newton, British mathematician, physicist, natural philosopher, discovered gravity, formulated three basic laws of physics. Jacob Grimm, German philologist, dictionary creator, folklorist, co-writer of Grimm's fairy tales with brother Wilhelm. Louis Braille, French inventor of a reading system for blind, lost his own sight at age three. Isaac Pittman, shorthand investor or inventor. Don Shula, football coach, second in all-time career wins, four-time coach of the year, took six teams to Super Bowls. Gene Dixon, a psychic and newspaper columnist. Floyd Patterson, World heavyweight boxing champion, first to re regain heavyweight crown. Joseph Suck, S-U-K, <laughs> Czech violist, violinist, composer, founder of Bohemian String Quartet. Grace Bumbry, an opera singer. John McLaughlin, a guitarist and composer. Mahavishnu Orchestra. Um, Helmut, Helmut, H-E-L-M-U-T, Helmut John, a neo-modernist skyscraper architect, architect. Carlos Saura, Saura, S-A-U-R-A, Spanish film director, Blood Wedding. Giovanni Battista Pergolesi, Italian Baroque composer, died at age 26. Jane Wyman, film actress. Marston Hartley, paint, painter. Andre Masson, French symbolist, surrealist painter, illustrator, and sculptor. John A. McCone, CIA director, atomic energy commission head and industrialist. Il uh, William E. Colby, CIA director 
and lawyer. Frank West, a jazz tenor saxophonist and a flutist. Archbishop Usher, which is an Irish-born 16th and 17th century British clergyman, stated they state uh, stated then prevailing Western view of world's age, 5,000 years. Boom. All right, okay. So <clears throat> wonderful, juicy. <laughs> All right. I didn't pick a deck out today. I thought I would just let it call to me. So we'll, I'm going to pick an Oracle deck and we'll pull a card for the energy of the day. Oh my gosh. It's so good to see you, Steve. Mwah. Happy new year, man. Oh my gosh. All that good eight energy we got coming through. Um, you know, I'm going to go with Rumi today. Yeah, those decks on that other row aren't calling to me today. Okay, so let's pull one energy card for January 4. Whether or not it's your birthday, if you come across this and you get something from it, take it with you, right? Okay. I'm gonna cross my legs real quick just so I can like, uh, shuffle on my lap. <laughs> One card, one card for January 4. Please and thank you. Oh, I'm going with this one on my lap, man. Wow. Victory of Miriam. Oh my gosh, we've just got all the colors and they're vibrant. 41 for five, changing energy. So. Lots of change coming for this year, right? And man, you could paint it any way you want to. You have every color at your beck and call. And man, it's almost like fire that it's like, uh, it's like lighting your way. Is that your hair? Is that your cape? Oh my gosh. So there's this road. It appears to be this road for me. And she's standing. You can see that it's like curving around. So things are changing, man. You're, you're headed towards, you're headed toward new destinations and you really are being powered by this like fire under your feet and at your back. And at the same time, you're also being powered by this, you know, all of these deep purples and blues of like uh, wisdom and communication and the surrounding color that's around, around all of these purples and reds is the green of, you know, earth and being grounded earth sign for Capricorn anyways, right? So, wow. She's also just like reaching up into the heavens. And as she does so, it's like she casts a shadow on that road ahead of her. So you are being called. You're being called from above. And almost looks like a trail of fire that comes down too, that has like flowers that are like coming down from her hand. We're getting like notions of, I, I feel like, um, flowers growing and produce growing and waves in here oh my gosh and also um i got the sense of like a volcanic eruption like at each step that you take it's like it's almost as if you're going uh, against what you're familiar with or what those around you are familiar with and um you're still reaching for the courage from above to take each step and you know inside yourself where you need to be and sometimes even when we're like um when we don't feel like we know you it's it's this these colors combinations and like the position and composition of her body is that like even when you think you don't know if you take a moment to uh go within and ask yourself those answers will be they'll be given to you in one form or another ask your spirits ask your guides ask god and um the answers are going to be provided for you oh my gosh so victory of yeah man is this like a victory a lap You've come so far and now it's to the point where it's like, okay, it's time to authentically be me. It's time for me to take these steps, do my victory lap. And man, with this five number, travel, changes, the tipping of, you know, the balancing of scales into a new mode, a new way of being. Wow. Okay. So 
that's my interpretation of the card. Now let's see what um, Elena Fairchild and um, the Rumi Oracle book have to say. So 41. I think the Rumi book has a longer read. So just a heads up, this is probably going to be a little bit of a longer read on here. 40. 41. Victory of Miriam. starts with a poem. If you are longing to caress the moon, don't turn away from it. If you are not ill, why do you crawl under a blanket to hide? You are in a quarry of sweets. Why do you look so sour? You live in the spring of life. Why are you withered inside? Don't fight against yourself. Don't flee from what could be your glory. Like a fearless moth, dive into the flame. Why be linked to your obsessions? Burn out in the flames until your heart and soul are enlightened. Get out of the old carcass and form yourself a new body. Why are you afraid of a fox when you descend from lions? Why be a lame ass when you have the strength of stallions? The beloved you seek will arrive to open the door to your future. For love is the key that opens all your locks. Rumi. Wow. Man, that's awesome. Okay. Let's read the interpretation. This is this, this little bit right here. This little paragraph says is in italics. You feel you are a mortal and I know you are divine. You feel you are not ready for the task. And I know that triumph is only moments away. You reach to me for protection, but you are me. And the protection that you seek is already with you. We are not apart. I am living through all that you are and all that you love, all that you have lost and all that you offer to me in surrender. I am in you as your courage and magnificence. And any task I send to you is simply one of the tasks for which you were born. You are an eagle with wings ready to soar. So I push you from the clifftop that you may know yourself. That's powerful. Holy majoli. This oracle brings you a message of affirmation and success. Your victory is already assured. You are being led into you are being led into it now. No matter if you believe it is possible, no matter if you believe it is not possible, and you are placing more faith in the appearance of distraction or obstacle than in utter success. No matter if you've forgotten for a moment that the divine lives in you as you and that that apparent failure is only a part of the process. The plan through which learning happens, serving the ultimate victor, serving the ultimate holy victory. Yes, your victory is inevitable. I'm thankful for this card. Yesterday was melancholy. <laughs> okay, um, I need to get more comfortable. One second. So you are being given this reminder from the Holy Mother Mary, also called Miriam, <laughs> and the beloved divine, pres divine presence of love that she serves. It is that presence that is real. It is the Holy Mother that is real. It is the divine in you that is real, and all else swirls around you so your soul can play. Every challenge and adventure is an opportunity for you to test your mettle and to be what you are in truth. The eagle that flies requires space and open sky. The tigress that hunts requires hunger and drive, uh, hunger to drive her, to fulfill her being and live her nature. You need what you need to realize your divine nature as a living, holy expression of the greatest love. So life is providing for you that your needs be met. Whatever may be troubling you, or is soon to present itself, is not a situation or a circumstance meant to bring you trouble. You just need to allow yourself to become more eagle-eyed, beloved wild one. It is not what appears to be that is the source of challenge for you, not at all. It is only how you are viewing the situation. Can you allow yourself to shift 
<laughs> I meant to say shift. Can you allow yourself to shift perspective? Yes, you know this is truth. It is only the forgetfulness that fear creeps in. Oh yes, to forget for a moment that you are divinity and to lapse into erroneous belief that the challenges are more real than the love they veil. No, the real challenge is in the attitude, not in any circumstance or situation. Bam, I needed to hear that. It's not over, but dang, dude, thank you. Will you remember that all is divinity manifesting and nothing exists outside of it? All is perfectly designed to help you fulfill your being, live your truth, experience your power, and reside in the perfection of your divine loving heart. Be curious rather than afraid. What is loving seeking? What is loving seeking to draw out of you now? Is it always love in interaction with you? Even if sometimes you feel like you are hauling a massive rock on your back up the steepest of all hills to build a temple at its apex. Yet when that temple is built overlooking the ocean and a startling burst of golden orange sunset explodes across the water, turning it gold, you're, you'll forget about climbing that hill. You just drink in the view instead. You'll forget that you were supposed to worry what you were supposed to worry about. Oh, don't you hate it when that happens? <laughs> You'll just have to love in that moment and be peaceful instead. It makes more sense to notice the sunset than to turn your back upon its glory and grumble about how heavy these rocks were. Then, in your inspiration and your forgetfulness, you'll dream of another temple and the process of creation, perhaps with more lugging about of great heavy rocks. And it will begin again. Whoa! Whoa! Sometimes emotions, man. <laughs> so beautiful. And it will begin again. Where am I? That took me over. <laughs> I'll find it. I'll find it. Process process. Captivating. Peaceful instead, it makes sense to notice the sunset. Okay, it renders you speechless. Then, in your inspiration and forgetfulness, you'll dream of another temple and the process of creation, perhaps with more lugging about of great heavy rocks, and it will begin again. But then, so too, will another captivating sunset be granted, best witnessed in your newly built temple that renders you speechless and spellbound. This oracle brings you guidance and comfort. Whatever is going on in your life right now, whether it brings you joy or deepest struggle, is the divine in you, as you, breaking through into your life. Do not hesitate to trust in it. Embrace it fully and let it have its way. There is nothing there that needs to be resisted. You are safe to be wild, to be alive. Live it with love and let it unfold. The promise of success is yours, so allow yourself to be brought to it through the guiding wisdom of life, the life that serves love. There is also a part of you that is daring to love, to live, and to trust more, to trust more so than before. You are even daring to quit the traumatic tendency to relive so many past hurts and aches. You no longer want to taunt yourself with failure and critique. You are less frightened of yourself, so... You do not need to sabotage yourself anymore. You are learning love's way and claiming it as your own. That is your path to victory assured. This oracle asks you to trust your own growing optimism, to let the war be over now and put it behind you, even if it means weeping with sweet sorrow and relief for a while. The sunset is golden. The struggle is behind you now. Just rest and enjoy the golden glow as you rest with love a long, long while. Damn, Beans. I say thank you, Spirit. I just, I needed that so hard. <laughs> so hard. <laughs> I did know. <laughs> Sacred honoring ritual. <clears throat> 
With your hands in prayer at your forehead, breathe in and out. And if you can, allow your mind to become still. Then say aloud, I call on Miriam, who loves me without condition, to bring me faith. And Rumi, who loves me unconditionally, to bring me oneness with the great beloved. I call upon the unconditional loving wisdom of life and my own divine essence. And I give thanks for all that is. I give thanks for the light that will be born from the darkness. And I give thanks for the fullness of my being coming into expression now. I give thanks for the grace and mercy that guides my way. And I surrender into the love that is leading me into my divine destiny now. So be it. Close your eyes and bow your head to your hands in prayer again. And still your mind, if you can, for several moments. When you feel ready, simply open your eyes and you have completed your honoring ritual. Wow. Dang, you guys. January 4. I'm so glad we did this earlier today. I'm so glad that I felt like doing this earlier today. I'm so thankful that you... Michelle... I love you. Thanks for holding this space with me. And Stephen, whoever's lurking in the building right now, I, I love you guys. I appreciate you so much. And man, that was a moment. And I'm thankful we got to share it together. And thank you so much to Spirit and my guides and all the gods and goddesses and the universe and to StreamYard and YouTube and any person, any soul, any being who comes across this and takes something from it. Take it with you, man. I hope it can enrich your day. Hey, Kiki. Oh my gosh. It's so good to see you. That was a really good message. It's probably about halfway through this video if you want to check it out, but dang, dude, it really helped me and I hope it can help you too. Whew. So until tomorrow for the January 4 personality guide reading, you guys have a wonderful day. I, I love you so much. Mwah. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Genevieve. I love you. Oh my gosh. Woo. I love you.